Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Open Line. Talking about Metro Parks, we have with us the director and the deputy director of Metro Parks, Tommy Lynch, Monique Odom. Several calls, so let's go to the phones here. Let's go to Harville. Is that right, Harville? Yes, sir, it is. Go ahead. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. As a, as a lifelong resident of East Nashville and raised in Shelby Park, I think Tommy Lynch has done a wonderful job at Shelby Golf Course. That's the best I've seen that golf course in my whole life of 70 years plus. That's a positive, but i got a negative thing to say. When are they going to clean out Shelby Park Lake? When I was a child, we would jump in the lake, and it was five feet deep down at the far end. Now it's one inch deep. And when it don't rain in July and August, which we've had plenty of rain so far, but in August we have mosquitoes that come down there, and I would just like to know when, it, when they were a, a plan on draining Shelby Park Lake, which won't cost nothing, and, and filling it back up. And, uh, but I want to thank Tommy for doing a good job. The Shelby Golf Course is in good shape. And he's uh, the best park director we had since James Pike. Thank you, and I'll hang up and listen. All right, thank you very much. Harville's been around. Harville's been around. I, I know Harville. I've dealt with him through the through the years at, at Shelby Golf Course. Uh, I will have to say this, and this has been one of the great advantages we've received by the number of people moving into Nashville. Our golf course system across the board is bringing in more revenue than it has in the past. Two particular golf courses, Shelby Golf Course and Warner Golf Course, are probably showing the biggest increase. So that, that's one thing that's been gratifying. And, and one of the other gratifying aspects of being with the parks is we have people who only want it to work in the same particular type of facility they're working in. We have golf professionals in our system, in our golf courses, that will compare to anybody anywhere. Uh, Darrell Edens is the pro at, at Shelby. He, he has done a wonderful job since he's been there, increasing rounds and the visibility of, of, the, of the golf course. Now, as far as the lake, instead of giving wrong information, I will just tell him that I, I will have to look to see how where it stands in the in the master plan for Shelby Park, and at what point we would do that rather than say, oh, we're going to do it next week and not be able to meet that promise. Is that the kind of thing? So here, that's clearly a want that he has. Should he make that clear in this master plan? Is that the kind of thing that people should be doing? Absolutely, absolutely. That is the kind of information that we're looking for. Um, the public to to give us either online or come to some of the community meetings and um, share those thoughts with us. Yeah. And people may not know about the golf courses. I mean, there's a large, right. large group of golf courses. There, there. Right. We have seven golf, seven courses, golf courses in our entire system. Mm -hmm. We have a recreational course that's that's in a part of Shelby sure. Park. They call Vinny Links. We operate that in partnership with the Tennessee Golf Foundation, and they run the. Uh, first tee program out of that particular golf course. So we, we, we do a lot of good at, at many of our facilities. Well, let's go back to the phones. Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Yes. Go right ahead. Hi. I actually just wanted to give the director a compliment on his park staff. Um, several months ago, I was part of a fundraising walk over at Centennial Park. And as we were cleaning up after the fundraiser, we had several bags of garbage, and we were carrying them back to the vans. They broke everywhere, and two fellows that were operating some park equipment, they were blowing leaves and some lawn equipment, they turned off their machines, came over, helped us pick up all the trash and load our tables into the van. And while I was talking to one of the gentlemen, and I apologize I didn't get his name, I had mentioned that I frequent Harpeth Knoll Park in Bellevue and that one of the slides was kind of dangerous. A hole had been worn in the slide, and I know some of the bigger kids, you know, jump up and down on it, but I was really concerned about it. And two days later, we were out there, my husband and I and the kids, and not not only was the slide repaired, but there was a new slide. So it may have been coincidence and someone else may have called in, but I just really appreciated the service. And I know with any government entity, they get their fair share of complaints. And I just wanted to give them a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank Very you. good. Thank you, Michelle. That right. is so gratifying to yeah. hear something like that, that yeah. we, we preach customer service to our staff. 
but when somebody can unsolicited let you know that somebody provided great customer service, that's excellent. I hope she uses the Harpeth River Greenway, which is not very far from the Harpeth Knoll Park and I'll in say, Bellevue. And I'll say, too, while well, we value all of our all of the employees in the department because they make the department run. We and we have a can do department. We have a can do consolidated maintenance division. Yeah. They get jobs done. Um, they have, of course, plans to do um, <coughs> deferred maintenance projects and things like that. But other things come up and they just make it work. And they make it, they do it seamlessly and uh, without, without complaint. Um, they're just a wonderful group of wonderful For the most part, the, the maintenance guys are the foundation. Absolutely. That events, facilities, yeah. structures yeah. are all f formed around. around. And, mm -hmm. and it's been a struggle as a department as funding has come available over the past 10 or 12 years. For a while, between 2005 and when the economy went down in 2007, our department was being stretched. We were adding facilities based on the original master plan from 2002, but at the same time, we were we were having to cannibalize the department because we were being hit with layoffs, and staff inside community centers, but primarily staff in maintenance was really impacted. The last three years, we've had positive influence from the budget process, mm -hmm. adding in more money for maintenance, mm -hmm. and we and we have had quite a big support from Mayor Dean at the end of his administration, but Mayor Barry, I think, has been very supportive of mm -hmm. our department with our first budget. So if somebody has a concern like that, that's, that's a great story for Michelle, that she expressed a concern about um, a slide in a park. She wasn't even in the park. It was a different park, and then days later it was repaired. She said it was even replaced, a new one. If somebody has a concern like that, how quickly can you act, and and what should they do? Um, you know, what 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 about that process? I think in that regard, we can act quickly because that was a safety factor, mm -hmm. and whether and and getting a phone call to notify us about that is almost unusual in these days. Sometimes somebody would simply take a picture and put it on Facebook mm -hmm. somewhere and go, this is a horrible situation. Yeah. And, and, but responsible citizens letting us know, because the reality of it is we go to work really wanting to do our job correctly each day. And, and by doing our job correctly, we truly feel that it's a very admirable profession. We help make other people's lives better. So we need to make sure we take care of ourselves while we're doing that. And just to piggyback on what Tommy says, I'd like to just ask the public to, um, if they see something that is um, um, broken or needing repair, if they would call the office or email us and just give us the opportunity first to correct it or repair it before it's, it's on Facebook. <laughs> it's on Facebook, or you call the mayor's office, or, or something like that. Just give us the opportunity oh, that to fair. do it. Absolutely. Yeah, just give and us we'll the put, opportunity. We'll put a number up a little later. Sure. That's, okay. that's sure. a great, we'll be glad to give it to you. That's a great um, piece of advice. Here. Let's go to Ellen. Hello, Ellen. Yes. Go right ahead. Hi, good evening. I'm Tommy and Monique. I'm a big sports fan, and I love to see how you engage in the community. My question is, what direction do you see the youth sports program going in the future of parks? Hmm. Youth sports program. Youth sports. Okay. Uh, one, one, of, one of the challenges we've had is to sort of retrofit some of our old parks that were based on the sports activities that were being used 10, 15, 20 years ago. I mentioned earlier, and during, during the 70s and the 80s and into the early 90s, adult softball was a major sporting activity that people participated in Nashville. Now it's dwindled down to, at one point we had over 1,500 teams. The last time it was in our budget, we had less than 150 teams. Wow. So we're having to retrofit our facilities. This type of information helps us, do we go to soccer fields or do we do football fields or do we do lacrosse fields? And all of them can be used on the same flat surface, but they're all a little bit different in the length and the width. But, but I, I love team sports. <clears throat> I've been a product of team sports. There's a lot of good that you can learn about yourself, 
and about life by participating in team sports. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, travel, ball, competition, the win at all costs type of atmosphere that is in the professional level as it's supposed to sort of drifts down to the recreational level. Uh, I've been an umpire and, and it's, it, it's tough to go umpire sport because you're trying to do the right thing and I, but you hear parents <laughs> If you I cheer you for do. cheering for your team is wonderful. Cheering <laughs> against the other team is something that probably right. is unacceptable. And that's the tough thing. We we really what we're doing now across the county is we have permits with various different neighborhood groups to use our facilities. Then they can kind of fine tune it towards their community. They just have to meet a certain criteria with us. They have to have a non-discriminatory policy. They have to do background checks on their coaches and they have to be fair. And our, our staff works with them to schedule them. Some of them we take care of the fields. Some of them we have permits with the groups for them to provide the maintenance on the fields and then those those groups their feed to us is less. In, in, in terms of youth sports, one, one of the sports that I would like to highlight is through the community centers and our um, partnership or sponsorship from the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, they sponsor teams and they provide um, jerseys and a backpack. Um, I think our, all of our coaches are either volunteers or staff people and it is a wonderful, wonderful um, team building yeah. experience. I have a young son myself who has played um, for the Junior Grizzlies for I think four or five years and it's been a wonderful experience um, through the community centers and, and again you know team sports not only do they learn to um, lose gracefully but to win gracefully, to work as a team, um, to to practice their their sport so they can become better. So I know in our case my son has, uh, it's been invaluable. Absolutely. And I'm fascinated by what you said that 10, 20 years ago it was all about softball. Mm -hmm. 1,500 softball teams mm -hmm. in Metro. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and now uh, you have 100 and something. So what's the big sport now? What What are the big teams now? Well, uh, the, you know, soccer, soccer. soccer is growing immensely. Mm -hmm. I think we could start tomorrow and build six fields every three months for the next six years, and we might still be behind on the number of requests we get for soccer fields. And that's one of the things we're looking at. We we have we have in this fiscal year's budget six million dollars to develop two soccer complexes. Wow. So we're, we're going to be working in that direction. And that's also what we hope to get from the plan is more information on more facilities that are needed. And again, part of that growth in soccer is attributed to the population growth and new Americans and new people coming to the city. So see, as the city grows and the population grows and changes and become more, becomes more diverse, we have to be ready to respond to the needs and demands of the population. All right, we're going to take a break. If you're on the line, hold on. We will get to your call. If you want to call, there's the number, 615-737-PLUS, 615-737-7587. Take a break. Be back right after this.